Hi folks, Adrian here from Wargaming for Fun. This is the second video I've done in my warts and all um, resin or introduction to resin printing. Basically, I feel that if I share what I'm messing up as I go along, then you're less likely to mess it up as you go along. And you're also able to point out where I'm going wrong and how to fix it. So that way we all get better. So what I'm going to do is take you through all the, basically the two weeks of miniatures that I've done. Um, yeah, take you through the two weeks of miniatures and hopefully you'll be able to see an improvement and the skills that I've been developing over that time. So when you get your 3D printer, in my case it was an Elegoo Mars, um, retails in the UK for, I think I paid £230 for it. Um, you have a test file, and on that test file, when you print that, you get two of these uh, rooks or castles from a game of chess. Now, um, these were cured. I think I did these with um, oh, Carl Screenwash, because that was the only um, cleaner that I had to hand in the house. Um, that had the meth space to clean her in. Ideally, rubbing alcohol is what you want to clean it with, but they just you can't get your hands on it for love and money at the moment because um, it's all going to the medical industry, and rightly so, to keep them safe. Um, so I cleaned it. Since then, I've swapped to methylated spirits, uh, which in the UK comes in a purple container because uh, if it didn't come in a purple container with that dye added to it, then it would have to pay drinks tax. That's why they had the container. It's basically to stop people drinking it. I know some people drink it. Blah. Anyway, um, so there are the two rooks that first came out. Now, the first thing I actually printed was the guy on the back of this. He's an Oki. Oni, sorry. is an Oni from the Artisan Guild um, Kickstarter, at the moment, not Kickstarter, patron. So the guy on the back came out and alongside, and next thing I think I did was her, which is also from the Artisan Guild. Now, both of these are what's called pre-supported, which means that all the supports you need to make them are included in the file. So it, it is basically a, a point and click kind of printing. There's a guy, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, he runs um, a YouTube channel, which I'll put in the link below, and basically he teaches you how to do it as well as doing it yourself. Um, I then printed the beast that he went on and the base. Uh, you can see a paint job there, which isn't the best, but you know, it's, it's my usual standard. And you can see the miniature there um, all through now. He's, the hand with the sword was one part. The flag on his back was another part. Uh, that hand there that grips the fur was another part. And the beast and the base were separate. Um, not the head and the body and all the legs and everything all came out in one part. I may have shown that on a previous one. Now, just to give you some indication of the detail on that, I've got it next to a lieutenant from my Space Wolves collection. Now obviously the base is finished on him but not on this one. I need to add a few more effects so it's got more than the Earth. And here is someone from the Death Guard painted, I would say I've painted that with a similar skill set to a similar level as the Oni. Yeah, it is Oni. Um, just to give you a context now I would say that if you didn't know you couldn't tell which one was shop bought and which one was made. Um, if you look closely though, there's no um, oh, mold lines. You won't see mold lines on a 3D miniature because he doesn't come out of mold. He's created from a vat of resin. Um, the only thing you may see are some support marks, which I'll go into later. Now, so that was the first batch. Um, but like I said, because that guy on YouTube does all the work, I just loaded up the files and then ran it. So that did it all. I then went on to print the rest. Now, as part of that set this month, their month's release, you get four 
grunts from the Oni, and you can see they are smaller than the others. Then you get two um, ogre size. Yeah, they're the ogre size. I forget the name of those, but they are a special type of Japanese ogre. A magician. Now, he, I haven't printed out the equipment for his hands yet. I think I've got one of his hands here. So, yeah, that would be one of his hands, which goes in there. And he has a staff, which I think is still in the garage. These are undercoated grey because they show, or primed, I should say, because the grey shows up better than the red. Uh, uh, this is the leader, so he would be the war boss if he was an orc, for want of a better expression, or a rook, or whatever he's called. He's an oni, but you know what I'm saying about GW stuff. So he is a bit larger than these, comes on a bigger base, uh, but he's not quite troll size. But you can tell he's got something about him because he's got a shooting stick on the back. Now, I then printed off the bases and you can see some problems I had with the bases initially. Um, and this is where you'll see the errors that I've made. Uh, where these little notches are, let's wait for the cameras to focus. Where these little notches are is where I broke off the supports. Now, if I cure it first, expose it to UV light first, so it goes hard and then break them off. You can see it snaps and almost shatters. If I break it off before that happens, then I, it, there's less of an effect of that. Um, it, um, it It's a lot better if you do it, basically you pull it out the vat, you put it in the um, methylated spirits to clean the excess resin off, then you put it in warm soapy water to get rid of the meths. And because I'm doing it that way, uh, the ideal point to break the things off is either in between the meths and the soapy water or between after the soapy water before it's exposed to light. But you can see that one worked okay. Hopefully you can see, but there is a distortion on these because these were supported. Basically you print them at angles like that and then the supports running all down the back to hold it in place. The problem I found, you can print off a lot more bases at once doing it that way, and they do come off the plate easier. But um, I was experiencing problems. You can see here the shattering effects with the supports. And then I had a chat with, or Chris, um, good mate, um, dropped me a line basically saying he prints his flat and use a very sharp scraper to get them off. So that's what I did with the subsequent bases. And now you can see these two are like for like base, it's the same base. This one I've printed flat and that one at an angle with the supports on the back. Still not many supports, but you can see where they were. And this one's worked out a lot better. So I might, while I'm still developing the skills and working out how to break off the supports and everything, go for the flat. You can then see that here, there's been a bit of the base mist and same on there. And that, I can easily explain that because I tried to cram too much onto the plate and then where it was on the very edge of the plate, you just cut it off. So I, I need to print less. I, I reckon that was a plate, those, and I tried to get a fifth one in there, which pushed some toward the edge. So it's a case of not being greedy when I come to do the printing. And if you're going to do supports, break them off at the right time. You'll notice um, these were both done flat and they are a different colour resin. Now, this is another, not mistake I've made because sometimes you may want it. Initially, I bought the uh, red and I thought black will be easier to see on film. So if I buy the black, when once the red run out, I thought I'll buy the black and then I can see it easier on the camera so I don't have to prime it and you can see it as it is. However, because it's black, it takes a lot more long, a lot longer to expose to the light, you know, in able to cure. So what I've done is these take twice as long to make as these. And once they're sprayed, you can't tell the difference. So I probably will go back to the red after or the green. You can buy gray, but for some reason, 
a tub of grey is £38 for a litre and a tub of the red is £31 for a litre. And when they you paint them and you can't tell and it's exactly the same finish, why would you pay more? So that's the um, Oni. But like I say, the Artisan Guild make it as easy as possible. <laughs> they do pre-supported miniatures and everything so that all you have to do is load it up onto your plate, make sure they all fit, unlike I did with the bases, and then print it. And they will print out, and it's very rare you get a misprint. If you get a misprint, it's because the machine hasn't been set up properly. Here are some uh, weapon options that I haven't used uh, for some of the creatures. You can see you get a variety of weapons and swords so that if you're building more than the four, you can chop and change and they would look very different. Now, she can be built with the double um, handed halberd. I'm going to call that a halberd. Um, but you could also build her with a sword and a hand or, you, you know, like she's built. Um, she comes with a halberd that you could build with her with instead of the sword. You could have the sword and the halberd. Just enough to mix and match it up, but similar to what you get with the plastics. So you can chop and change your miniatures. Now, if I was going to use these in an army, it would probably be in an orc army for Kings of War or something like that. Uh, paint them green and they would look as orcish as anything else. I actually think for, the, for that community, I could paint them red and no one would bat an eyelid, no one would care. Um, because it's quite forgiving as a um, tournament setting to use what you want as long as you can tell where it is. Now, there are some others from another base, uh, another one. Here's some mistakes. Now, these are 28 mil regular guys. They're not heroic scale. And you can see the level of detail, hopefully that will focus, is absolutely phenomenal. Now, these aren't based. But I have found these a little less forgiving than the Artisan Guild ones. But that's down to me making mistakes, I think. Um, this guy is a guy from... Oh, Thingiverse, which Matt found. Ooh, fingers over the lens. Um, he's a Blood Bowl character. I, I forget what he is. But you can see uh, where off. Well, you can see his tail's not there. And there was a few, although you can't see them so much now. Ooh, let's get him in focus. Nodules where I put the supports. I put the supports on him. So any errors there is down to me. But I was quite pleased with how he turned out being my first attempt at adding bases. Okay, um, mistakes that I've had. I was printing out this uh, vampire card and you can see the point where the vat ran out of fluid. I didn't put enough fluid in the vat. Um, so that printed out incomplete, but I intend to have it at an angle sinking into a pond as a piece of terrain. So it won't go to waste. I can use that. Um, quite comfortably this is the whole model printed out now there is a character to ride on there and a bit of a platform and there is a beast which pulls this if i put that there this is the beast that pulls it and you can see he fits in front of there and then these chains attach him but i didn't want to attach him until it's all on the base now that is huge you could use that as a corpse cart in aos or similar i mean you could use it in kings of war as well uh, as part of a vampire army. Um, you can, these are printed at 100%. Now you can shrink it and print it at 50% if you wanted to. And I probably would have if it hadn't been for these guys in the back. You can see here, I um, don't know how much detail to go into with mistakes I made. If you look at that, you can see the hands reaching out of the card. And if we look at the same area on the one that finished, you can see most of the hands, but not all. That's down to the fact that I was too vigorous when I was cleaning it. Uh, it was the first model I've used a toothbrush on. See, I'm from the Midlands. We tend to say toothbrush, but around here, people say toothbrush. So I cleaned it with a toothbrush, toothbrush, um, too vigorous, left it in the mess a bit too long. So the little hand... Uh, came off you can see there but because it's a zombie I reckon I'll get away with that um, so I think that'll look quite tasty when it's painted up 
as part of that Kickstarter. The name escapes me. The name escapes me. I'll put it in the link below. So um, I'm giving credit where credit's due. These were pre-supported zombies. So that, that's the zombie ones. Um, the vampire S is from that as well. I've got this guy who's the doctor whose hands I haven't stuck on yet. Um, this guy who is another vampire. Now, any of these would be quite at home. Oh, there's another zombie. Any of those would be quite at home in any uh, zombie army. As with these, these haven't been undercoated yet, but they are done in black. So, um, you get the idea. Now, I printed two of the one type, one of the others. You can flick these about the x-axis if you want to, uh, to make them look slightly different. Um, these are the bases for those. Now, you can see these bases have turned out perfect. Again, using Chris's method of printing them flat on the base. Oh, did I print that flat on the base or did I use? No, I've used supports on that. No, I've used supports on both of them. So you can see the bases. Now they were on supports and they've worked quite well. Um, you can see that there's, I haven't sanded them down at the bottom, but you can see the supports are negligible. The, the damage that just tucked inside. And the idea is that these fellas will be stuck on those so that when you come to play, you've got your base and it's a very dynamic pose. Um, right, another mistake. Uh, this is like a Fury, which is a demon guy. I'd say um, demon prince, that's what they're called. But this is called a Fury. He's very similar though. You could use him as is. Now he came out and I had two perfectly formed wings, but no demon prince underneath. So I did set something up wrong when I printed that out to get the outside bits um, with all the supports on, but not the middle. Uh, this guy, again, is off Thingiverse. Now, just wanted to print him off basically to experiment. And you could see, if you wanted to, you could probably do your own Imperial Guard uh, type troops. This guy's based on World War One German, though, I think, as is the Krieg to start with. But you get the idea. Um, so you, you could download him and print a whole army off. And there's some of these with LAS guns and all, LAS cannons even and all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff. Um, they get round, I say they get round the IP. They're not copying the IP because they do it with, it's based on World War One, isn't it? It's not based on um, Krieg, but you would use them as Imperial Guard um, if you wanted to make your own army. Um, and that's it. So that is my first two weeks experimenting. I'll uh, let you know how I get on in the second. Hope you're enjoying the journey, folks, and hopefully I'll get to a point where everyone's a winner. Take care. All the best. Bye.